Hi students, today I will give you a brief idea of the NMR spectroscopy. You know, NMR spectroscopy is included in the fifth module of chemistry syllabus. And chemistry is included in the first year BTEC course. The code of the chemistry is either CH101 for odd semester or CH201 for even semester. Myself, Tonmay Dotto, Assistant Professor, Department of Chemistry, GS College of Engineering, Kollani, I welcome you in my class of NMR spectroscopy. Today we will discuss about the uh, basic principle of the NMR spectroscopy. So first of all we will discuss about the basic principle. Okay. Then we have to know about the spin of the nuclei or the nucleus. Okay. So then we will discuss about the what is the uh, relationship between magnetic moment and the spin of the nucleus. Then we will discuss about the chemical shift what is the chemical shift chemical shift then finally we will discuss about the uh, application of the nmr spectroscopy so that means application so uh, these things we will discuss today one by one okay so first of all when we will discuss about the nmr spectroscopy just like uh, uh, uv visible and um, ir spectroscopy that two spectroscopy uh, uh, are also included in your syllabus so in case of uv visible spectroscopy you know their uh, uv light was absorbed there for the electronic transition for the ir spectroscopy uh, their uh, infrared light uh, radiation was used for the uh, change of their uh, bond vibration for the molecule here from the name uh, from the name of the nmr spectroscopy that means uh, what is the full form of the nmr the full form of nmr is the nuclear magnetic resonance so from the name it is uh, very much clear to you that uh, two things are very much clear that nuclear means there must be some kinds of involvement of the nucleus nucleus means nucleus of the atom and a magnetic means there must be some kinds of relation with the magnetic moment and uh, what is the resonance we will discuss uh, in details when we when we will discuss about the basic principle so nucleus and the magnetic moment these two things are very much related with the NMR spectroscopy and uh, in which region NMR spectroscopy uh, or the radiation is absorbed that is the radio frequency region and this is the uh, lowest energy level if you compare the previous two spectroscopy like UV visible and the IR spectroscopy then you will understand that that UV visible has the higher energy with respect to IR and IR has the higher energy uh, with respect to the radio frequency level. First of all, in case of nuclear magnetic uh, resonance, okay, this is a full form of NMR. So, nuclear magnetic resonance here, one very important property is that in the atomic structure, we discussed about the spin of the electron but nuclei or the nucleus also has some kinds of spin that means nucleus is also spinning around its own axis so due to its spinning you know nucleus is the it is the uh, the uh, positive charge so you know if any kind of positive charge spin around itself it produce some kinds of magnetic moment isn't it so if it produce some kinds of magnetic moment then its direction of the magnetic moment depends on the direction of the spin i will show you so, uh, if you look the picture just look the picture that nucleus is spinning okay so but the direction of the spin of the nucleus that direction is different for the two cases okay so the, for the first case it is the clockwise direction 
and for the second case it is the anti clockwise direction okay so if the clockwise and the anti clockwise direction in the two direction then look there the uh, developed magnetic moment or the magnetic field direction also different if for the first case it, it look here in the upper side there is a north direction and in the lower side this is the south direction but this is the opposite in case of the next case or the second case second case the spinning direction is opposite opposite that's why the uh, di the direction of the magnetic moment that is also uh, different in the up position this is the south direction and the lower position this is the north direction so depending on the spin of the nucleus the nucleus can uh, produce the direction of the magnetic moment that means of uh, what we will discuss throughout the chapter you have to keep in mind that um, that we will discuss in the chapter that uh, the direction of the uh, because we will um, will imagine that nucleus as a bar magnet throughout the chapter okay so that means uh, the when the direction will be changed we will discuss as a bar magnet direction will be changed but you have to think then that direction change means its a rotation angle or the rotation direction will be changed okay so you have to think in this way so you have to keep in mind this fact that uh, when we consider the spin of the nucleus then it creates some kinds of magnetic moment now come come to the point okay so if you think about that uh, if you think about that many atomic nuclei have a mechanical spin okay so you know that maximum of the nuclei has the spin and the angular momentum uh, obviously if it has the spin obviously it will have the magnetic momentum the spin angular momentum of a nucleus depends on the spin quantum number so here is the another thing it is the spin quantum number like in case of you know uh, like electrons also there we discussed in the atomic structure chapter that there was some kind of spin quantum number so here also the nuclear nucleus has the spin quantum number a nucleus which is composed of the z protons and n neutrons then total spin value will be a vector combination of z plus n spins each of magnitude half so a nucleus uh, with an odd atomic number or an odd mass number or both has this property spin that means it is actually the condition of an nuclear nucleus to be nmr active what we discussed about the ir spectroscopy there were such kind of condition also that how one compound will be ir active here in the same way we can discuss that how one nucleus will be nmr active so what is the condition of a uh, molecule or of a nucleus uh, to be nmr active either the uh, uh, molecule or the or either the nucleus have the odd atomic number or odd mass number or both has the or odd number okay i can give you one example such kind of then it will be more clear to you if you if you think about that there are three condition okay so either what is the first condition first condition is that the nuclei either have odd atomic number odd atomic number or odd atomic number or it have or it has the uh, odd mass number mass number or both odd and both the atomic atomic and mass number mass number will be odd okay so there are three condition either odd atomic number or odd mass number or both the atomic and the mass number will be odd so if we take any example like if you take the example of uh, example of like uh, hydrogen okay so it's 3h1 sorry 3h1 3h1 so here what is the mass number the mass number is the 3 and the atomic number is the 1 so here both atomic number and mass number they are the 
odd value so no problem either odd atomic number or mass number or both atomic or mass number will be uh, odd so the condition is fulfilled if we take another example look here 2 1 okay so this is the another isotope of the hydrogen so a uh, look here mass number is not odd but the atomic number is odd so no problem here same case actually we can we can get the condition of the first case but what happened actually just if you think here fully in this case in the first case look here in the first case here what is the number of the uh, proton the proton number is the one because in the nmr you have to keep in mind all the things which are happening this is in the nucleus not in the outside of the nucleus okay so here we are discussing about the all the phenomena uh, in the what happening in the nucleus okay and what is the neutron number neutron number is 2 here because neutron neutron number means uh, its mass number minus proton number or atomic number okay so 3 minus 1 equals to 2 in this case what is the proton number proton number same 1 but here uh, what is the uh, what is its uh, uh, what is its uh, uh, neutron number neutron number is the one okay so that means the required condition is that that uh, one either proton or neutron there should be at least one should be the uh, odd number okay so if the proton has the odd number it's okay either both has the odd number it's okay uh, but if the both the proton and the neutron both has the uh, odd atomic number then uh, the problem will be there that it will not be anymore active i can give you another example okay so if you take the example of uh, if you take the example of carbon if you take the example of carbon that carbon has the 12 and the 6 so here uh, what is the proton number the proton number is that here proton number 6 and neutron number also 6 so it is nmr inactive this nucleus is nmr inactive why because here both proton number and neutron number both are even so the condition is not fulfilled on the other hand if you take the example of the c13 like c13 6 it is the nmr active clear what i am telling so that means uh, you have to check i will discuss also that why uh, what is the relation with the odd uh, proton or neutron or whatever so when we will discuss the basic principle then it, it will it will be more clear it will be more uh, easier to understand okay but uh, at, at this moment just keep in mind that it is the required condition for a particular nucleus that if there is either any uh, odd number or atomic number or mass number or both the odd number then we'll get the active nucleus for nmr spectroscopy okay now come to the point that what is the basic principle the basic principle behind the uh, nmr spectroscopy what i told you that that before applying any external magnetic field the nucleus of the nucleus of the any compound there are in the random direction look here depending on the spin of the nucleus they their magnetic moment in the different direction okay so they're randomly distributed in the compound and that direction is this arrow sign indicates the direction of the magnetic moment and i told you and i already showed you that uh, how the magnetic moment is generated due to spin so this arrow sign indicates the magnetic moment direction because there is no external magnetic field which is applied in the compound so before application of the external magnetic field they randomly distributed throughout the compound okay good but when we are applying any external magnetic field so this is the external magnetic field okay just think about that nucleus that all the nuclei are the bar magnets okay they are small bar magnets okay so then if you apply any higher magnetic field any 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 magnetic high field magnetic moment then what happen the nuclei has the tendency either the nuclei oppose the magnetic field or the nuclei has the tendency to uh, support the magnetic field that means there are two tendency all the nuclei i'll show you 
that uh, before application of the magnetic field all the nuclei is like this direction okay just think about this is the magnetic moment here it is the nuclei like this okay so they are randomly distributed in any direction okay now you are applying a external magnetic field from the outside then there are two tendency either if this is the direction of the external magnetic field then what happen either all the nuclei either the nuclei will support the magnetic field or it will be the aligned with the magnetic field or it oppose the magnetic field depending on that what is the direction of the magnetic field or magnetic moment before application of the external magnetic field if external magnetic field direction is the knee is near uh, to the to oppose uh, to to opposing the external magnetic field then it will just move to this direction if it is near to uh, rotate in the direction of the uh, external magnetic field such that it will be aligned with the external magnetic field then it will be aligned with the external magnetic field so there are two tendency either it uh, support or the the external magnetic field or it oppose the magnetic field okay so there are two condition but if it support the external magnetic field then what happen the energy of the nucleus uh, will be lower the energy of the nucleus here it will be lower here the, the the nuclei uh, which support the external magnetic field their energy will be lower and the energy which oppose the external magnetic field their energy will be higher so that means look here uh, when we are applying the external magnetic field there a clear separation between the two stage before the application of the external magnetic field all the nuclei have the same energy there there was no energy uh, difference uh, between the uh, nuclei but after the application of the external magnetic field the nuclei either it align with the external magnetic field and this is the this is called the alpha spin state okay so which uh, uh, support the external magnetic field this is called the alpha spin state and uh, which oppose the external magnetic field this is called the beta spin state this is called the beta spin state so there is a clear separation of the two spin state either it is alpha spin state and another is the beta spin state so look here also here after the application of the external magnetic field there is a clear separation of the two uh, uh, two to clear separation of the two energy level so lower one is the uh, it is the lower one their uh, spin quantum number okay we are okay another thing another thing which you have to know here we are discussing all that things of the proton nucleus okay so proton nucleus means 1h1 okay so in your cell there are so many types of nmr spectra we can take like 13c also we can we can take but in your syllabus this is there is only 1h1 proton nucleus is included in your syllabus so what we are discussing here the uh, that depends on the proton nucleus so that's why here the pre the spin quantum number of the proton nucleus i that equals to either plus half look here or minus half depending on the two spin state either plus half or the minus half so lower spin state here also same case previously it was the i equals to half but when we are applying some uh, external magnetic field then uh, it split it into the to separate energy level uh, to separate uh, it generates some energy level the lower one is called the alpha spin state or it is called the plus up and higher one is called the beta spin state or i equals to minus minus up okay so depending on these two fields uh, we are getting the uh, energy separation between the higher and lower spin state now uh, i think there is a question in your mind that what is the basic difference between the uh, alpha spin state and beta spin state they are diff they differ actually their uh, direction of the rotation i will show you by the animation that how their um, direction of the rotation will change now this is the case but after that if you apply so we are getting
so we are getting a clear separation of the alpha spin state and the beta spin state okay now if you apply some external energy that is in the way of a radio frequency because what i told you that a radio frequency energy match with the energy difference between alpha spin state or beta spin state or any animal spectroscopy radio frequency energy is used here because that the energy coming from the this type of radiation is near equal to is near match with the energy separation between alpha spin state and the beta spin state okay and if the energy separation match with the, the the energy which is coming from the outside then what happened the alpha spin state nuclei jump to the beta spin state by the absorption of the energy isn't it so finally we are getting a jump of the electrons from alpha spin state to beta spin state by the absorption of the energy so clearly like the previous two spectroscopy here also we will get some kinds of absorption of the energy and it is our final goal okay so each and every case I, I, I told you that our final goal is that there should be some absorption of the energy absorption of the energy in any form either it is uh, in any 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 region either it is UV visible spectroscopy either it is um, FTI either it is IR spectroscopy either it is uh, NMR spectroscopy finally we will get some kinds of absorption okay because this absorption actually indicated by the spectrum when we will take the spectrum that energy energy uh, a label is missing okay in the spectros in the in, in, in the spectrum in the nmr spectrum so that means we can understand okay so in this region energy is absorbed by the sample and by this information we can identify uh, which type of or how many types of nucleus present in our sample okay so this is the basic principle of the nmr spectroscopy I again repeat uh, what is the basic principle okay or I can I, I summarize the basic principle of the NMR spectroscopy look here that if any nucleus has the uh, uh, odd atomic number or odd mass number or odd both the atomic number and mass number then the nucleus is spinning and if it is spinning then it creates some kinds of uh, magnetic movement but this magnetic moment is randomly distributed in the compound okay when there is no external field external magnetic field applied when we're applying some kinds of external field from outside then what happened there will be a separation of the alpha spin state and beta spin state occur because of which nuclei support or which nuclei al align with the external magnetic field this will be the lower spin state or alpha spin state and which have the uh, which oppose the external magnetic field this have the higher energy level or the beta spin state that means we are getting a clear separation of the two energy level now if we apply the radio frequency level uh, from the outside then what happen then obviously the energy which match with the energy gap that energy this energy will be absorbed by the sample and the and the uh, uh, nuclei will jump to the higher uh, energy level by absorption of the energy and we are getting some kinds of absorption of the energy so we are getting the nmr spectroscopy now there may be uh, some question in your mind that how that jumping occur that means the direction can be changed it is very simple the direction will be so look at this picture that it, the direction will be changed by uh, simply uh, the changing the, the nuclei will jump from lower to higher stage by simply uh, changing its direction of the rotation okay so when it absorb the energy if you if you see the animation the yellow color is changed from lower to lower energy level to higher energy level and this is actually called a resonance um, so in this process the uh, nuclei nucleus will jump from the higher to lower to higher energy level by this process now another thing is that that uh, just think about if you uh, if you uh, the if you if you uh, increase the external magnetic field that means what magnetic field you are applied what magnetic field you are applied here if the value you are increasing first there is a difference like that if the value is increasing okay the value of uh, there is, is the h is the h1 and h1 greater than h then what happen the separation of the energy level will be increased isn't it okay so if it is previously it was the alpha beta now it is the alpha and beta 
that means if the if the external uh, energy level uh, what external field you are applied if it is increased then uh, which align with the external magnetic field it goes lower and which oppose it go, goes more higher that means finally what we are getting uh, we are we are getting finally the uh, energy difference between the alpha and beta state will be higher so with increasing the external magnetic field the energy difference between alpha and beta it will be higher and that means that indicate the absorbed radiation energy will be higher that means it will absorb the energy radio frequency level uh, which will be more higher with respect to the previous case because depending on the energy separation your energy gap will be your energy in the gap will be depends on the uh, external magnetic field so that both cases there depends on the external magnetic field so this is very complicated that either you have to constrain your external magnetic field otherwise we can't get suppose if uh, if if any 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 uh, lab if there is any say for any sample if it is measured uh, for some tesla value and another lab if it is measured some another tesla this is the magnetic field then what happened that in the both cases will not get the peak in the same area that's why we have to take some constant value some constant sample or some uh, standard on which uh, the the overall result uh, globally it will be same so that's why we have to take uh, some kinds of uh, standard that is called the tetramethylsilane or tms actually tms and um, by this tms uh, we 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 can uh, measure the uh, uh, peak uh, where we are getting the peak that means the uh, distance between the uh, our sample peak to tms because tms is the standard so what what is the field it is observed by the tms the same field is observed by the sample also so that means that problem that means a change of the magnetic uh, external magnetic field and the uh, frequency or the that means the radio frequency that all will be nullified by when we use the uh, or, or when we take the result with respect to some other standard so here we will take the nmr value as the uh, delta delta means it is the chemical shift chemical shift means it is the distance between some standard distance of the peak suppose it is the peak okay so it is the distance between some standard uh, with our sample peak in this way we measure the, uh, the delta value delta is called the uh, actually uh, chemical shift okay so the what how we can define the chemical shift chemical shift can be defined in this way the separation of resonance frequency of nuclei in different structural environment this is very important okay that's why i told you repeatedly that if we measure the sample in different structural environment so it will be nullified by the if we use the standard okay so for some arbitrarily chosen standard tms is not generally taken as the standard whose resonance frequencies are arbitrarily taken as zero is termed as the chemical shift okay it is the chemical shift that is uh, this is very very important for your exam purpose okay keep in mind and what is the tms the full form is the top the tms is the tetramethyl silane tetramethyl silane this is called the tms okay now what are the application of the uh, nmr spectroscopy the application of the nmr spectroscopy is that nmr spectroscopy uh, we understand that the types or, or the types of atoms present in the sample the relative amounts of the atoms present in the sample the specific environment um, or environments of the atom within a molecule the purity of a comp uh, composition of the sample the structural information about the molecule all, the, all that things we understand from the nmr spectroscopy that means from the nmr spectroscopy here from the uh, from the graph of the nmr spectroscopy we can understand that how many types of environment is present uh, in our sample so actually how is it possible i can i can show you a rough structure uh, of this the, these things actually so look, look look at the structure then you will understand that how we can determine the different types of uh, nuclear present so in your syllabus I told you that in your syllabus there only uh, hydrogen or the proton NMR is included. So if we take the compound like uh, uh, CH, so there look here now that uh, here in the in the in the uh, both the cases here some hydrogen is present, here some hydrogen is present. But here in the both cases the environment electrical environment is not same now why I am telling you the electrical environment or what is the requirement of the electrical environment look here 
the nucleus i am telling about that nucleus it is the carbon nucleus or it is the hydrogen nucleus okay but nucleus is not the naked in the nucleus the surrounding is the electron field or electron surrounding the nucleus isn't it so when electron also creates some kinds of magnetic field here also if you think about that here also there are some bonds are present some bonds are present isn't some bonds are present so that bonds means it creates some kinds of field so that means in overall situation of one nuclei if there is any nuclei if there is any nuclei then this nuclei surrounded by electron field so when any of the elect external magnetic field you are applied you applied here you are applying here then what happen that uh, external magnetic field have to cross the shield of the electrons okay so there are two chances this magnetic field environment either support the h0 that means the external magnetic field then the magnetic field of uh, which actually uh, which actually filled by this nucleus it will be greater than h0 if the magnetic field of which uh, is uh, supplied by the instrument this magnetic field will be higher with respect to original because this electric field support the or uh, will be aligned with the external magnetic field but if it uh, occur uh, opposite case then what happen then the hydrogen will fill this nucleus will fill the uh, uh, external magnetic field which is lower than a0 that means what uh, what uh, uh, magnetic field we are applying from outside this will not uh, reach exactly in that value uh, to the nucleus because nucleus uh, this is surrounded by some kinds of electron cloud so this also creates some kind of spin or like magnetic moment or etc etc so this magnetic moment have to cross the external magnetic field so this external magnetic field depending on the electronic atmosphere this external magnetic field either it will be increased or it will be decreased depending on the environment so i already uh, discussed with you that depending on the uh, either increasing or decreasing there will be a chance of the uh, separation of the energy the energy level alpha and beta if the external magnetic field will be changed the value of the external magnetic field will be changed then the energy separation between alpha and beta this will be changed and hence the absorbed radiation will be changed okay so uh, if one 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 if the absorption radiation will be changed so the peak will not be in the same region the peak will get the peak in the different region so that means we will get the we understand that in different types of nucleus present different atmosphere present in the compound from there we can understand we can uh, we can write down the structure what what example i uh, discussed with you look here that here that two hydrogens are uh, that two uh, that two hydrogens are not same okay so if these two hydrogens are not same then what happen they are this hydrogen and this hydrogen will get the two peak okay this is not the one peak this is the two peak for the two hydrogen here two hydrogen if two same atmosphere the peak height will be lower here it is the higher if it is the three hydrogens are same atmosphere so whatever we are getting the two peaks for the two hydrogens because the two hydrogens the two hydrogens are not in the same atmosphere so that's why we can get the two peaks and we understand the atmosphere are not same and from this atmosphere concept we we, are, we will be able to draw the a rough idea or we can able to draw a rough uh, structure of the probable structure of the compound and by this way we can identify that how many types of a nucleus present in our compound or we can we will be able to draw the types of the or draw the the probable structure of the compound this is the application of the nmr spectroscopy and it is the most beautiful side of the uh, nmr spectroscopy that finally from the nmr spectroscopy we will be able to uh, draw the probable structure of the compound so this is the overall syllabus of your nmr spectroscopy so what we discussed today uh, first of all we will discuss the basic principle of the nmr spectroscopy and we discussed about the uh, that uh, what is the uh, theory of the spinning or the generation of the magnetic moment 
and then we discussed about the that how alpha spin state and beta spin state that uh, was generated um, in a particular nuclei or particular nucleus uh, then we, we, we discussed about that how absorption occur and then we discussed about that why it is required to take any standard like TMS tetramethyl silen uh, for any kind of any kind of uh, particular molecule the, this will also be discussed and then we discussed about the application of the NMR spectroscope and that's all for today and meet with you in the next class with a different topic goodbye and thanks to all of you for attending my class take care